to um, do this uh, education for you this evening. Uh, my name is Rosa Colucci and I work for PPG Paints. I'm a color consultant. Uh, my job is actually to go around and help uh, residential homes, people in residential homes, commercial, and also um, I do a lot of churches, um, pick paint color. Now, this might seem like a really weird job, but you would be amazed at how many people have trouble picking paint color. Um, I love color. I love uh, paint color. Um, I've been like a paint addict for more years than I want to admit. And uh, I started my career in color almost 25 years ago when I was a writer, a features writer for the Post-Gazette, and I covered the color design and paint industry. And so I was one of the first reporters in the country to cover the color of the year and all the design trends that you see in, in newspapers. Um, this was before Instagram, before Pinterest, people would have a printed paper and um, they would actually cut out my stories and use them to paint their, their homes. So here I am, long story short, one thing leads to another and I end up um, at PPG. So I've been doing this for five years. I'm a certified color educator. Um, I do national color education as well. Um, we're going to go through our 2021 palette of the year. We're also going to talk about you know, the, the name of this is why is everyone painting their houses blue? If you go on Pinterest and you go on uh, Instagram, you start to see why everyone is painting their color and their houses blue. And we're going to talk about the, the history of color a little bit. Um, just a little bit about our company. I'm sure if you uh, have been in Pittsburgh or if you are remoting in from another part of the country, this is our, uh, our iconic headquarters, um, PPG Place. And uh, we actually created all of this glass that is in here. We used to be a plate glass company. We are primarily a coatings company now. And uh, so that is our iconic uh, headquarters downtown. Our architectural division is in Cranberry, PA. Um, we have a very wide um, group of color ex experts from all over the world. Um, and as I'm moving my screen, I just want to ask, make sure you're not seeing this little corner I'm moving here because I'm kind of looking at some notes. Um, we have 11 countries that we work in. We have 35 stylists and five major business segments. Um, our forecasting expertise goes literally all around the world. Um, we have customer and consumer centric presentations, workshops. We do an annual global color book. We do these presentations and the color that we forecast touches everything that is in your life. Um, we have an architectural coding segment. We do aerospace. We paint every airplane that flies in the sky. We even paint the NASA space shuttle. Um, we do 80% of the cars that are on the road globally. And the consumer electronics, I know that you saw um, I, Apple had a big presentation yesterday. They have all these great colorful iMacs. They are in orange and pink and purple and green. We do all of that color. That's one of the things that we do. We actually created the coding that enables the touch screen to work on the iPhone. So that's one of the codings that we um, created. Uh, we also have industrial. We paint all the bridges and cell phones. Um, it's a couple things you can see here. Falling water, we help save this building. And um, we paint Harley Davidson. So I always kind of laugh when people are talking to me about other colors or other paint companies. And I say, well, you choose PPG every day. You just don't know it. But we love what we do. A lot of the product and the innovation that goes into painting an airplane, keeping it cool when it's at 20,000 feet, um, we put that innovation in a gallon of paint that comes to your home. So it's pretty cool. You get all that for free. The big companies pay for all that technology. And then you get to uh, have it in your can of paint. We work with some of the world's uh, largest design um, houses, and all of these are the groups that we are working with. So we have buckets that we work in, and we work with them when they are creating products that you use in your home. And so we know what's going to happen two years in advance. We have to know what's happening with automotive four years in advance because we have to get the production lines ready. So there's a lot going on with color, and uh, you get to benefit from that, as you'll see. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, our 2021 palette of the year and our residential color and design trends. Um, you should know that we actually work a year in advance. And so when we put our color and design together for 2021, we actually had it ready to roll in April 
of 2020. Actually, it was March of 2020. So that photo that I showed you with all those folks getting together, they come together from all over the world for three days and they bring fabric and they bring swatches and they bring textiles and whatever it is that is, is inspiring them and they talk and they really we get together and we talk about what is going to be trending in color what are we seeing in japan what are we seeing in asia what are we seeing in south america it's a global color palette so we came out with this palette right basically when COVID hit and so a lot of what you're seeing here was already decided and worked on before COVID and the pandemic took over um, so we're forecasting this really so far in advance Nothing really changed um, from what we forecasted. We always choose a color of the year, but what we did decide to do was break it into a palette of the year, which I'm going to explain. Um, but I wanna take a look at some other colors before we go into the blue that I was talking about. Um, in 2017, we named the color of the year. This was it, it's Paradise Found. It's a really beautiful green. And you're seeing a lot of this green coming back now. It's really starting to come back around. I know if you're on any of those social media sites, you're seeing like in this lower left-hand corner, this beautiful green, green cabinetry, uh, the furniture, you see the cars that we were painting. This color really took off, people loved it. Um, we presented it at the Home and Garden Show and they were going crazy. People were standing in front of this wall that we had painted Paradise Bound and they were taking a lot of photos. Um, incidentally, people always ask me about gray. Gray became a very big player in 2008 and 2009 when the stock market crashed and people lost all of their money. Um, and so people didn't want to be stimulated. And so they went to gray because it was just the most non-stimulating color that they could and it just soothed their mind and it's totally just blanked everything out. They wanted no stimulation. So gray took hold back in 2008, 2009, and knocked off what was our number one color for six years in a row, which is a color called ponytail. And that color is a color you've probably seen, I'm gonna pull my palette out, um, a whole lot. It was a very rich brown, and uh, it was put in every new builder home, and it was just, you know, it, gray just knocked it off, and it was amazing. And when it took, um, when it took hold, it really didn't let go. It was a color that we did all the gray as a trend. We didn't see it move for a long, long time. Now this here is ponytail. I'm gonna hold it up. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this builder brown that you probably saw in a lot of houses. And it's still a great color. Some people still love it. I still love it. It's one of my favorite earthy colors. In 2018, we were now moving into social media and uh, we named our color of the year a uh, black flame. And this is a black that has a very blue undertone. Um, when we named this as the color of the year, we had over 13.2 million hits on social media in the first 48 hours after we released this color. People lost their mind. They could not believe that we were naming a black as the color of the year. Um, even all of my colleagues were saying to me, like all the salesmen that, that work with accounts, they were like, how could you be naming this as a color of the year? And we did a show house and we painted um, one of the walls um, in black flame. And uh, every time I went into that room, I would see just a bunch of people hanging out in there. They just loved it. It was like a really warm hug with that blue richness underneath it. Still is a fantastic color, works in the inside, works on the, on the exteriors, reads really well, and it doesn't look cold. 2019, another color you might be familiar with is um, Night Watch. Now this color is a very, very rich jade green and we still see a lot of this. One of the things you're seeing here with Night Watch in this photo here on the left-hand side is uh, the rise of biophilia. As we've been dealing with global warming, we went from people wanting plants in their house to people wanting to open up their living spaces from inside to outside and, and making these big accordion doors and, and big outdoor spaces. And then 2019, we saw that people were now letting the greenery literally grow over their houses as you see in this photo. And this is what you see a lot of in contemporary design. You hear about green roofs where people are in inner cities putting greenery on the roof that keeps the house cool, that keeps the building cool, it keeps the temperature of the city cool. Um, CMU 
has a huge project that they've been doing for many years where they have a lot of green roofs on their buildings and they've actually been able to lower the temperature of the space around them almost 10 degrees which when you're talking about global warming if we all just put some grass on our roof and did something like this it would probably take care of the problem um, this color here is wonderful it's still very very strong people are really connected with nature even now more so because of the pandemic and we've been cooped up so much it's very resilient color very meditative and very calm and studies show that the greens and the blues really do bring a lot of calm to your space lowers your blood pressure and makes you feel restful and that brings us to our next slide which there it is chinese porcelain this color of the year sorry about that this has been glitching all night let me go back here um our color of the year chinese porcelain for 2020 was a huge color of the year it let me get it i'm sorry there it is it just keeps sticking on this slide this color was so popular we i put this in a display um in ikea in the lobby and um I, I built a beautiful like you know i had the designers i gave them the color and they pulled a lot of product out of the store and made a vignette with this color and we had one wall painted in this color um, we were only going to keep the vignette up for like two days and there were so many people interacting with the vignette it stayed um up over the holiday weekend even through the fourth of july and the numbers came in over 40, almost 40,000 people interacted with this display over like a 10 day period. It was insane. The one day that I was there, there were teenagers inside the display checking out the color. And I said to my boss, you know, you have a color that's a hit when teenage boys are hanging out and talking about how, how cool it is. Um, one of the things that with Chinese porcelain and you know why everybody has been using blue, people have been moving out of the gray trend. And what has been happening is people are looking at their homes and saying, what can I pair with gray that, so that they don't have to repaint their house? This color, this blue and all the different shades of blue pair very well with gray. So it's very easy to take an accent wall in blue or to paint your dining room in blue if you've painted your whole house in gray. Um, this color is very restful. It reminds you of the water. It lowers your blood pressure and you don't have to change your whole house. So this color is very popular. It still remains very popular. Now what we are seeing is the blue is now transitioning and having a lot more green in it. So it's becoming more of a teal color, which you've been seeing and you will see a lot, but people are painting blue. I'm doing a lot of kitchen islands in blue. I'm still doing a lot of cabinetry in blue, still bringing blue into the bathrooms and, and the color radius is large. So whether you go to a very light blue or to a very dark blue. It is still um, a color that is just really working wonderfully, even if you have painted your entire house gray. Um, I wanna show you the color stripe from this because every color on this is, is just lovely. And there's your Chinese porcelain right there. So even at the very bottom, the blue is very rich. Now, I just wanna real quick show you how to read this color stripe. So you probably have walked into a paint store or you've walked into one of our displays at the Home Depot and you're like, oh my God, all these colors, what am I doing, right? And how many of you have like painted a color on a wall and then all of a sudden, next day or two days later, you look at it and you're like, gosh, that looks like it's purple or I didn't realize it was that green, you know, and the color starts to change and you're wondering why is this happening? So here's your big, big first tip of the night. When you pick a color, you need to look at the color stripe and see what's going on at the bottom here. This is the color with all the pigment. As you work on the left down stripe and you're going up, this is the undertone. So if you wonder why that gray that you picked now has all that brown in it, um, and I'll show you one of those color stripes. That's why, because this is the full pigment and it comes up 10 to 15% every single time you go up the next notch on this color stripe. So if you wanna know what the undertone is, you need to look at the bottom of the color stripe and that's gonna give you your clear definition of how blue or gray or brown a color is going. Um, I'm gonna show you a gray here because I get this a lot with my 
clients where they painted something and they're like, why is this color moving? So this is a prime example of a gray color stripe. This is one of my most popular grays, this early evening right here, 1006-3. And when you go down to the bottom of the color stripe, you see how brown it is? That's a warm gray. So that shows you right there that this gray has a lot of warmth in it. If you go down the color stripe and you see a black or a blue undertone, that gray is gonna look black or blue with that undertone on your wall. So I hope that helps you. Okay, now, our 2021 palette of the year was developed, um, as I said, before the you know, coronavirus hit. And we were just talking about some of the things we look at as a company. We look at key social drivers. We look at what's going on with the environment, what's going on with the economy, what is going on with um, your people's retirement plans. Do people feel like they have money? Do they want to spend? Or is employment good? Are people feeling well? Like what is affecting all these things that are driving your choices when you are out shopping? So in this past year, all of these things, which on this graph, you know, this really affected us so much. So we had COVID-19, we had, you know, protests about racial equality. A lot of creatives were rising. A lot of things were being destroyed. Um, we were also looking at, you know, a lot of things changing with our healthcare. So you see a lot of people, this, what we call an age agnostic mindset. So 78% of Americans do not consider people in their 50s or 60s to be old. So um, this woman that you see here in the middle with the gray hair, um, that is the mother of Elon Musk. Uh, who developed, uh, invented, the, you know, the Tesla. He owns a Tesla car company. She is Maya Musk, and she is a, a beautiful woman, and she also is a model, and she's in a lot of different um, ads. So you see a lot of that. If you look at what's coming in your uh, papers right now and all of your catalogs, you're seeing a lot of older uh, people in there now, senior citizens. She's almost 80 years old. Um, and so we have a lot of health and wellness so that is also tying into the colors that we are choosing. A lot of regenerative um, medicine, a lot of adaptogenics. So there are a lot of herbs, things that are just making us live longer and have better lives. We also have borderless communities. So what you're seeing is a lot of um, ethnic design coming from all over the world. It's not like it takes five years for a pattern to come over from you know, one part of the world, we open up our phone and the next thing you know, we're looking at this great piece of artwork that was created across the world and people start, you know, taking that and making it into a wallpaper or something like that. Um, so there's also a drive, you know, towards like active kindness and people are saying, how can I help my neighbor, especially now? So all of these things in the past year have affected how fast information is coming along, the decisions that we're making and how we are either sheltering in place or opening ourselves up to our neighbor. So one of the things a lot of people have been doing, finding compassion. You've seen a lot of people, even children, working and you know doing little projects while I've been home, like during COVID. And so they're doing projects. Maybe it's like a digital lemonade stand, or I've seen a lot of kids like on Good Morning America collecting clothes or making lunch bags for their neighbors. So finding kindness, finding compassion, definite driver and color choices. And as I was talking before, preventing and healing and regenerating. So a lot of things that we are investing our time and money in, we want to have holistic care and sustainable diets. We're meditating. We're trying to sleep better. All of these things are helping us deal with um, not only the pandemic, but as we're getting older, we want to be healthy. And so it's really important. So we're seeing like the age range of people in sports and, and people challenging themselves. It's, it's, the age just doesn't matter anymore. It's the young and the old and we're regenerating ourselves and trying to stay well through our diet and through our um, supplements that we are taking. I love this one, choosing comfort. Um, this is like really important. I love this because it is a little term that we talk about, Nixen, it's a slower life, slower consumption. A lot of cottage industry people are shopping locally, um, if they're shopping at all. And then the comfort material, it's kind of funny because when you're looking at this little mat that the dog and cat are laying on, you might think that that little, um, it looks like a sheep, like a sheepskin. You're seeing a lot of furniture with that on there. Um, 
and you will see a little bit later because I have a preview of what's happening in 2022, but that, that whole roundness and the softness and the enveloping and the comfort of it, very, very important, and we're seeing it come out a lot in design. Now, as a result, we have developed um, three color stories, and our color stories go around the things that I've just been talking about. So be well, and the themes of that are the creating comfort, mindful comfort, balance, nostalgic and fresh, nurture, solace, and deep joy. Be true, anchoring reality, where we're looking at uh, things that have integrity, know-how, and you're gonna see some like older, richer colors in there, colors that are just very anchored and true through the decades. And be wild, this is a lot of like optimism. So you're gonna see a lot of regeneration and resilience and a lot of brighter, uh, more you know, hopeful colors. And you can see this Mediterranean blue is one of them, for instance. Um, and the key color that was tying everything together is this color transcend. So this is a color that is, we're starting to take this neutral, this warm neutral, and you're seeing a lot more of it. When we introduced it um, last year, people were looking at it like, wait, what is going on? But now as you see a lot on Instagram, people are painting this color like all over the place. So it's kind of fun to see what's going on with it. Now the Be Well color palette here um, is, you can see we have some blues in here, Canyon Blue, Midsummer Night's Dream, and this Misty Aqua, these colors are all over. And the Be Well, these are all colors of wellness. These are colors you would see in a garden. These are colors you would see in, in a pot of flowers. Autumn Glow replicating the sun, Midsummer's Dream, you know, beautiful blue sky, um, the Misty Aqua, all these are very relaxing colors. So it's a color and a palette of comfort. And here are some of the colors in design. And I was talking about how everything is meant to create a sense of calm and, ev and evoking just a really you know, big sensory experience. One of the things you need to notice about this palette and all of the items that are being used is everything is very round. You're not seeing a lot of sharp edges where we had a couple years ago, even the big sectionals were very square and the furniture was very square and you're putting together all these cubes to build your, your space. This is a lot more communal, flexible living. And so we were doing this, um, you know, like last year when we put this together and talking about it and now what's happened, so many of us have been in our homes and we have been taking all of these pieces and we've needed them to be flexible. So what you're seeing here in this room, this is a really flexible space for people to gather. You can pull chairs to a corner, you can you know, have a little chat session, you can get all around the one table and have a game um, together, or you could actually sit there and eat on your laps if you want. Um, but look at the light fixtures, all of, everything's very, very round, very soft. Nothing is you know, really just hard to look at. It's just very beautiful and very soft. And here we are looking at some kitchen spaces um, and some bath spaces. And we we're gonna be looking at some more of that a little bit later, but look at what's going on in the kitchen here. Everything's very natural feeling, very soft. Um, we are seeing a lot of pink and soft tones making a comeback. A lot of this has to do with the natural stone. So we're seeing natural stone on, um, these are little handle pools for your cabinet from Anthropology, And all of these colors, very soft whites and everything is just not that whole brightness in this particular palette. It's just a lot of softness that's going on here. Another thing that's really important, and we talked a little bit earlier about the biophilia and all of the greenery, um, a lot of locally sourced sensory displays. So if you go into, when we were going into restaurants or if you go into Phipps Conservatory, you're seeing a lot of this. People are creating this in their homes now. Um, a lot of the big retailers are putting in living walls. You can actually bring one home and put like little succulents on your, on your wall. Um, I know that Ikea had a big living wall display in their restaurant when it was open. Um, and it's just really something that's just so important. And you're going to see a lot, and it's a trend in kitchen now, where you have kitchen gardens. They're actually putting the kitchen gardens in the island. So you can walk around and pull some herbs, uh, pull some fresh little microgreens and put them in your salad and constantly have them instead of worrying about like going outside. So you're going to be seeing a lot of this. It's more commonplace. It was a little radical. Last year we were seeing it moving forward, but now it's moving from public space to in your uh, residential home. 
I talked a little bit before about the rounded shapes. And here we see that a lot, a lot of these chairs. I was um, in Home Goods last night, just wanted to see what was going on in Home Goods. And I'm gonna be talking a lot about that a little bit later because there's some patterns that are coming into play that are really exciting. But a lot of the chairs I saw in Home Goods had a lot of this shape in the upper left-hand corner, this, this disc that may, for some of you, may remind you of what was going on in the 70s. Um, it's just these chairs that really comfort you and they hug you. And that has a lot to do with it. You're also seeing a lot of um, the shape here with the mirror in the upper right hand corner, a lot of rounded shapes. Everything is very rounded and very soft. And in the lower right hand corner, you're seeing the sofa, this uh, wonderful sectional, which is very curvy and it has that boucle fabric that is like sheepskin. It's very huggable and very soft all the way around. The pastel infusion continues. In this particular palette, we see a lot of dishes. Everything just marries beautifully to each other. And uh, nothing is offensive to the eye. Everything's just very round and very beautiful and very soft. A lot of the finishes here are very chalky and they're very minimalist, but they're very rich. Even the sink in the lower left-hand corner with this warm, warm wood is just very beautiful. And it's not like this harsh um, kind of design. It's just something you want to touch, you want to feel, and you just feel very calm when you look at it. And here's some other photos with color usage. Um, I want you to notice how the pops of blue are coming into this rug and into this um, area, this uh, accent pillow. Um, it's a you have a, that canyon blue that I had showed you a little earlier in this palette is on the rug. And then over on the pillow, we have the, the richer, more of a teal oceana kind of blue. And of course, that color, I'm wearing this right now. You can see this terracotta color coming in very strong. Um, and it's also showing here on this table. You're going to be seeing a lot more terracotta this fall. So if you're a person that loves earthy colors, this season in this fall is going to be when you want to do your shopping. So the Missy Aqua, Transcend, Big Cypress, all these colors working together, a lot of compassion, feeling nostalgic and feeling refreshed. Our next color story is the Be Well, pardon me. And with the Be Well, we can see a lot more of this blue and this richness popping in here. I think I'm a little out of order here. I'm sorry about that. Here it is. That's where I want to be. Be true. Okay. The be true is the uh, anchoring reality we were talking about. Now this palette, I really, really love this palette. I love these colors. I'm a big fan. Um, you can see I, when I had pulled out that ponytail color a little bit earlier, I want you to take a notice of the best beige color. That's also a very, very popular color um, within PPG. It's been very popular for a long time. This best beige is almost used as a neutral. It's in our Harmony palette. And I really love it because it's not too brown and it's not too red. And you can literally put any color next to it. You can put a pure gray next to that color. You can put a rich blue next to that color. You can put a yellow next to that color. That color is friendly with every other color in the palette. Um, the greens that you're seeing here, the Holly Glen and the Juniper Berry, fantastic colors. They look like, you know, plants outside and they're, they're muted enough that they also sit very well with a lot of other colors in their home. When you look at this palette as a whole, it plays very well with each other. Um, I just love this palette. I think it, it plays well, especially in a lot of homes in Western Pennsylvania where you have a lot of older homes with a lot of natural wood. If you don't want to paint your wood, this is a palette that you could use to keep your wood trim natural. Any one of these colors will look beautiful with your warm oak floors or any of the honey colored oak in your home. Some of the other things that about this, which you've been seeing a lot, we see a lot of natural, this gold that's been coming back, very big. Um, a lot of gold on the fixtures, on the bath fixtures, on the hooks, on the tableware, on lamps. I was at the customer's house today doing a color consultation. She had a gold table, side table. She just bought at Home Goods with a little cute lamp that had gold. She just loved it. And she wants to just redo the whole room. And we're actually doing it in a, a lavender kind of color, like almost an eggplant in the room. So it's gonna be really pretty. And there's a lot of heritage influences. I don't know how many of you have been uh, like 
scrolling around on Pinterest or Instagram, but wallpaper is, is coming back and you're seeing this big floral in this wallpaper. So this bathtub with this beautiful mint green and that wallpaper behind it, that's what we're calling. And this is what you're going to hear it here. If you haven't heard it, grand millennial style. So what is happening is a lot of millennials are basically raiding grandma's closet and they're taking all the printed dishes and the printed napkins. They're tired of looking at black, white, and gray and they want color and they want design. They want something more upscale, things that are inspired by the past and that have stood the test of time. And that is what you're seeing here. Interestingly enough, on the left side, this, this gilded mirror is from Anthropology. You could very well have easily purchased that in a resale shop. So grand millennial style. If you Google that term, you're going to see I was in Home Goods. They had a, a curved arm bench with a, a, a beautiful twall fabric on it. That is just going to be exploding. This was just the beginning this year, but it is going to be huge. And um, I love patterns, so I'm really excited about, about it. A lot of it is another term that we use a lot is this new nostalgia. So what you're seeing is a lot of old items that have been remade to be new. Um, this particular little wallet here is made from a used baseball glove. So it's like reusing things that last forever and ever. Um, this looks like an old wash tub. It's a soak tub. Notice all the wood. Everything in here is just old. Old, but new. So things that are just being repurposed so that they can stand, they're standing the test of time. Uh, people are getting things refinished. It's just fantastic. Um, I love this feeling. It just feels like just wonderful. And notice all the colors. Um, this was interesting when I was presenting this last year because Ikea has a line of cabinets called Ivar. And um, I actually have one here to the right of me, and I would show it to you, but it is just loaded with too many books right now. Um, but in that line, they have, they added these kinds of cane cabinet fronts that you see right here on this um, screen. So interestingly enough, cane furniture, and you're seeing the cane in the seat, and you're seeing the cane on, on all of these seats, really that's, that is like an artisan, uh, it's an artisan craft. You really have to like know what you're doing to do cane or even to have it repaired. Very, very expensive. Caning is, is um, if you have a cane chair, don't get rid of it. You know, do what you need to do to take care of it. Um, it it's, a, it's a wonderful piece to have, but you're seeing the caning now in the front of furniture itself and it's actually making its way to these, to these kitchens and to some mainstream marketers. So um, really interesting look. Uh, it looks very nostalgic, it looks old, it looks new, it's kind of fun. So here's that global influence I was talking a lot about. So you're seeing like on the left here, all this fabric, this beautiful tie dyed fabric. Um, and this bench from Anthropology, um, I follow uh, someone on Instagram and uh, every day she's in London and she has these two cats that you know are, are like really funny. She has a very unusual cat. And she is Japanese and she lives in London and she has this bench in her house. So before I saw this every day, like the cat would be jumping on the bench and doing all these funny things. And I was showing someone this, this cat because it has like these weird Scottish fold ears and everything. And uh, the cat, the cat looks like almost like a little bear. And I said, let's check out this cat. So every day she, the cat's jumping on this anthropology bench. And um, I was like, oh my God, now it's in my presentation. So it was kind of like cracking me up, but you can see all these beautiful colors. And you know, this has been a product of the anthropology. It almost looks like a woven rag rug that you would take and put it on the piece of furniture. Um, and that being said, if you have some like heavy fabric or something like that, don't get rid of it. If it's frayed at the edges, you'll see a lot of people just taking that and maybe covering a piece of furniture with it or something. Um, it's, it's just adaptive reuse. So the color usage here, just fantastic. You see a lot of that global influence here on the left side with this rug. Um, it almost looks like mosaic or some Moroccan tile there, but all of the colors in this palette, you can see this welcome home, pizza pie, ruby lips. Look how they are splashed throughout these uh, spaces. Beautifully, beautifully applied. So you can have these splashes of color and still have a neutral palette. Um, there are two ways to actually do this. You can paint your walls white if you want and bring the color in through all the decor, or you can put some color on the wall and then neutralize your decor. The key is to not overwhelm the space. Another um, 
lineup of the color usage here, we have all the greens and all of those almost blues. That Holly Glen is a beautiful teal. It's sitting in between the blue and the green. And um, the gargoyle is a grayed off green. And the juniper berry is very, very dark. I love how these colors work together. And you can see that this palette is anchored by that best beige. Remember how I was telling you that that color is friendly with everything. So beautiful color. And the welcome home gives you that, that pop of gold. So we're replicating that. The welcome home is replicating the gold that you're seeing um, all over the place with a lot of the uh, fixtures. And if you have any questions, don't feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, Anna will read them off to me and I can answer some questions for you as well. Um, I have a couple exteriors here. I've been doing a lot of exteriors and people have been painting their brick and they've been painting their brick white. So I wanted to just take a quick minute and talk about this because um, we have a lot of brick here in Pittsburgh. If you go and you're from another city and you're online with me, you might have a lot of houses that are vinyl siding. Uh, vinyl can be painted. Um, but in Pittsburgh, people have a lot of brick and they have a lot of red brick or, or maybe that Pittsburgh orange brick and they don't like it and they want to change it. So they're painting it white. Now, one of the things that's happening is that people are saying, I want this color and they're sending me a photo like, like you're seeing right here. Um, and I, you know, when you look at our palette of white, we have the, the white palette is just huge. There's tons and tons and tons of whites and all the whites have undertones. So when you're picking a white and you're picking a color to paint your house, it's really, really important that you get paint swatches and you actually test them because these are all whites, just some of my whites. Some of them have a pink undertone. Some of them have a blue undertone. Some of them have a green undertone. This is all considered white. And depending on where you live and how the sun hits your house, it's very important that you pick the correct white. Some of those whites have a tinge of pink in them. So if you have a, the sun, which puts warmth on there and your, your um, house has south facing and you've got that warmth on there, that little tinge of pink is gonna blow up and you're gonna look like you have a pink house. So really important that when you're thinking about painting your brick white, or putting a white on your house, you need to make sure you've got the right undertone so it's not fighting and you don't end up with uh, a color that you weren't really looking for. Our third palette is the Be Wild palette. And I told you this one has a lot more uh, life in it. Um, interestingly enough, these colors, very, very, very dynamic colors. And I just absolutely love them. The white in this palette here, this Pacific Pearl in the upper right-hand corner is a grayed off white. It's very different than the delicate white that you see over on the left-hand side of the screen. Pacific Pearl is even cooler. It has a, a, a dollop of blue in there. Um, and so it, it's a great color. And if you want something that's crisp looking but won't turn like yellow or won't turn pink, Pacific Pearl, great color. It also goes very well with black and white. Um, this palette, Activating Optimism. This is a palette you're gonna see a lot with millennials. Um, I just did specify a room in this French lilac. This French lilac is a gorgeous color. It works so well with white and then a richer blue like accents of blue and this cerise and they're beautiful, beautiful. So when you're looking at these palettes, what you might want to do is if you're going to decide to paint the room one color, you can take some of these colors and accent it. Um, we have a formula that we're working with whenever we put rooms together, 60% of the room is one color, which would be the wall color. 30% would be either your floors, or your furniture, and then you have some accent colors and there would be three accent colors to make up the 110% that we would put into a room. And I did say 110, because sometimes you might only have two accent colors. So now that you saw that palette, you're probably like for a second thinking, oh my God, what is she doing with that? So here are some of the furniture that's out in the marketplace. Now, a couple of things I wanna take note of here, this is a great slide. Um, what you're seeing here in this arch that I was talking about earlier, this arch, this roundness that we saw going on all the furniture is making its way to the wall. So and people are now, some of them are painting accent walls, but they're actually painting like these accent arches. So you're seeing this a lot um, on social media. This particular room in the middle here, where you see this blue, this is a kitchen. Um, and so this is what we're calling color blocking. So color blocked where the pots and pans are. Then you can see to the left is actually a door. 
and the door has this archway in there. So it's creating all this visual interest where there might've just been like a block. Now, this is kind of fun to do because look, if you get tired of it, you just paint the wall back to the color that you had. So it's not that big, big of a deal. The other fun thing about it, if you have a secondary space in your home, for instance, like in the basement and you've remodeled it and you've made it uh, like a family room, this is a great treatment to put in that family room to do something like this, because it's a fun space. So you might you know, have a place for people to be gathering. So that's a good place to put some color and do something fun. I talked a lot about that grand millennial style with all that pattern. This is a little bit more blown up than what you would be seeing. Grand, true grand millennial would be a lot of twall and a lot of like uh, overactivated florals, even some of like this artwork I have behind me. So, but it's fun to see all these colors being used and uh, these colors on the bottom, all very bright, but look how they're all together on this piece of furniture. It's just really fun. So if we're seeing some outdoor furniture here, um, a lot of the activating optimism you're seeing, you know, like we talked about kids projects and things like that. Of course, this was done before the pandemic, but, you know, kids getting together. We do a lot of colorful community projects at uh, PPG. And so we've gone and painted even a lot of schools here locally where we've done, you know, fun play yards and put a lot of these types of colors in there. Now, uh, one of the things in this palette you have when you have all that bright color, you need something to ground, you know, to ground it. So black and white will ground those colors. So when you put the neon green, neon orange, it all works. Now, one of the things I want to talk about in this particular um, slide is the usage of black doors and black windows. We're seeing that everywhere. And I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. Um, so you can mix your black doors and black windows with your white trim. You can also make the entire thing completely black. So if you have a very active home and you're always cleaning off, you know, spots on the doors, you can feel free to take your doors and paint them a rich black and do it in a nice semi-gloss and you will just really save yourself a lot of work. Um, and they look beautiful. They look very classic. They look very rich. And um, so this is definitely a great example of, of painting your railings black, doing your doors black, and still keeping some white. The rule of thumb when you're painting trim, if you want it to be highlighted and to be noticed, you want to paint it a different color to create contrast. And if you want it to go away, so if you have some trim that's really annoying you, like maybe a chair rail that you don't really like anymore, if you paint that chair rail the same color as the wall, but you do it in a, in a different sheen, um, it'll create the texture, but it will like make it visually go away. So it won't be as pronounced. So the, the appeal of black is going very, very strong. And here we see it on exteriors. It eliminates a lot of distraction, blends in the environment. Interestingly enough, in this exterior on the left here, there's a lot of angles. So by painting everything the same color, the trim as well as the body, it eliminated all of the, the angularness and actually made the house set in and let the greenery around it take center stage. And we're seeing a lot of this as well, a lot of roof inclusive colorways. So the roof, same color as the body so that the houses are just grounding really into the, the earth around them. And you see it at this new home construction trend. It's definitely something you're gonna see in the South. I don't know if I'd wanna put a white roof on my house here. Um, we have a lot of you know plant life and you would be cleaning that roof a lot. And for those of you that have trees around your house, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I love this color gray by me. It's a great color to put on the exterior of your house. Blends in really beautifully with a lot of the woods and everything that you see here as well. And then I was talking a little bit earlier about the indoor outdoor experience and that's what you're seeing here. And this is interesting, this black. Black is very, very big for um, a statement wall. People think it feels oppressive, but it really doesn't. It kind of visually just fades away when you are having black in your home. Um, and it's really fun to watch because you see in, in all these photos how beautiful it looks. And uh, activating joy, that optimism we were talking about, lots of plants, be wild over the top. Of course, these are some, um, these are some stores that we have like, that are like retail shops around the country or the hotels you'll see a lot of this at, um, but it's just beautiful. So you can take some of these ideas. You don't have to be totally crazy. Um, I know that in the 70s, you would have seen a lot of this like plants hanging, macrame hooks, all of that. All of that's back. And there's a lot of fun ways to work it into your house. 
Just gonna click through some more of these for time with some of this color usage. There's that blue odyssey. And I wanna just go here to the kitchen and bath trends. Excuse me, and talk about um, what has been going on. There's so much, so many fun things going on with kitchen and bath right now. Lots of geometry, lots of statement tiles, full slab backsplashes, lots of gold, lots of black fixtures, lots of color, and a lot of just, you know, just fun things. It's a really great place to, to put the craft into your home. Um, this photo we looked at a little bit earlier when we were looking at the actual cabinets, but I want you to notice the backsplash here in this particular kitchen. One of the trends is people wanting to eliminate the visual clutter in their kitchen. So instead of having a statement tile, they're bringing the, the countertop right up to the back of the wall. So that's what you're seeing here. It's all one solid slab. So they're having the slabs in the back, the slabs on the corners, um, and even built into the sink. This makes everything very easy to clean. Um, there's no texture from grout lines, very easy to just keep tidy. And it has a, a beautiful setting. And what this is doing is it is giving you the space to um, really check out the artwork above the, the uh, stove there. You've got the beautiful gold pot filler and, and you have also the gold uh, fixture on the sink. So the other thing, very interesting, I want you to take note of this little lamp in the corner. So this is a nice way if you have a large kitchen to kind of just make it feel a little homier. Just bring some lamps and You see Leanne Ford doing this a lot in her design. Uh, she's a designer that works with us as well. She uses all PPG paint in her spaces. So mindful comfort and a lot of indoor gardens. You see, I was talking about this earlier. A lot of mid-century modern houses of the 70s, you would have seen these planting gardens and they're all coming back now as well. I talked a little bit earlier about the uh, gardens in your home and in your island. Here you can see on the bottom of the slide here, this is actually an urban cultivator. It's an automated kitchen garden. So this will mist your microgreens and it also has the light. You can program this so you always have herbs and greens. Very, very smart way to keep these items fresh. It might seem like something expensive to put in your house, but how many times do you run to the store and buy some basil and you use three or four leaves of it, right? And before you know it, it's, it's bad. So that's $3 every time you do that. Um, so when you think about it, it, it actually in time will pay itself off. Here we have a garden going up um, on the lower right hand corner um, up the side next to the sink. So a cute little ladder, nice way to put a garden in. And then I was talking about this garden here on the island and you can see it um, in the Just Add blog here all the way around. Just beautiful, beautiful in nighttime, gorgeous kitchen. Really fun ideas um, to, to put into your kitchen there. Another thing is this living garden, the living wall as well. That's from William and, Son William and Sonoma. So you can just go buy that, hang it on the wall, put some microgreens in there and always have some like fresh sage and thyme. And it's really fun because it's a chalkboard. So if you switch these out you can, you know, know what's in there and just switch it out as you need it. I think it's a great, great thing to have. The brushed metals I was talking about. So of course we've been looking at that brushed nickel for a really long time, but now we're seeing brushed copper and we are also seeing the brushed gold. Um, if you're going to do something, brushed certainly is going to make it a lot easier for you to care for in the long run. So it's beautiful, very, very comforting. It feels very warm. Um, it takes the coolness off of that space when you, know, you wanna relax at the end of the day. I think it's a great way to, to do that. A lot of heritage nostalgia. So we're seeing a lot of this type of plumbing where we have all of the open plumbing in the lower right hand corner here. Um, and that is something you might have seen in a farmhouse 100 years ago when plumbing first came into our homes. But of course, these pipes are, you know, beautiful to look at. They're finished so that they're not going to stain. Um, but we're also seeing that type of shop house handmade, handcrafted shelving here in this kitchen so we can display all of our beautiful wares. Um, love this faucet in the lower left hand corner as well. And it's very practical because it has all those elbows. You can pull it out and push it in so that it's practical when you can, you know, put less wear and tear as you're filling heavy pots. Now, I was talking a little bit about all the geometry and all of these wonderful encaustic tiles. I don't think that this is going to go away anytime soon. I think people, you have two schools of thought. You're either really tired of looking at everything being, you know, just 
minimalist, but now people are really breaking out and they want this pattern. So here we see this herringbone floor in the lower right hand corner and look at it. Very little gray. You see how we don't have a lot of gray. It's a beautiful, neutral, very soft and enveloping feeling. And even the gray in this particular kitchen is a very soft gray. It almost has a, a tinge of a little bit of green in it. Um, I love all of the backsplash tile here. This is a very interesting use of it in the center photo. You can put in the space like this where you've got that refrigerator on one side and you've got this backsplash, you can put just a pattern tile right there to draw your eye to that space. You don't really have to put it all over the kitchen. You don't have to overwhelm it. Pick and choose where you want people to be drawn to. If you have a beverage center in your kitchen, that's a great place to just put some of that beautiful tile. People will be drawn to it and they'll go there to get their, their drinks um, when they're in your home. Um, and I love the color usage here on the left side of this kitchen where you can see the island, um, very dark. I think this is a really smart thing to do. I'm painting a lot of islands when I'm doing color consultations because if you do a dark island, you know, if you have the kids and they're kicking the island, you're not going to see all these scuffs. If it's white, it's, a, it's really hard to keep up with. Here are some more of those tile crush statement tiles. Gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful, fun. Um, this is really just like so beautiful. I know it might be a little overwhelming, but if you have a space that's like a big loft or a big box and you really want to just make it look fun, this is a great way to just do something interesting. You can have the rest of the room be neutral, but this is going to just draw your eye to it. So I just love how all this feels. And notice down here in the bottom photo, you have all this architectural geometry. These are large slab tiles here. And you can go in some of these tile stores and actually see all the tiles put together and, uh, and developed in this way. And uh, you can put together the forms that you want in the shapes. It's just really fun. The full slab backsplash I was talking about a little bit earlier. Here we have one in black with a white vein. Um, and of course, you know, we have this, this vein is very warm. Take a note of the cabinet color. The cabinet color is a, almost like a cafe latte color. It's not pure white. Things are softening up. Um, one piece of advice I would give you when you're going to buy some stone for your home, make sure you go to the slab yard. Um, anywhere you're going to buy granite, you can go um, with Armina stone or you can go over to you know, YQ granite, you can go to Primo. You want to look at the slab and you want to make sure you bring your paint color swatch so that everything that you're going to be planning on using a color, bring your cabinet sample, bring your granite sample, like bring your cabinet sample and your paint sample to the slab so you can actually see how it's all going to fit together. Um, it's a very expensive purchase um, and so take your time, go through the slabs, make sure you like that vein where it's going to land on that island because um, you know there's no two slabs are alike so that's really the most important choice when you're making that type of design decision. Here's a little bit more of those golds that we were talking about with all those imperfect finishes, a lot of hammered craftsmanship there. So beautiful. Um, these are all different cabinet pools that you see here on the right side. They're all stacked up. Very, very beautiful. Um, I don't know if I would use these particularly near my stove because um, I wouldn't want to be wiping off <laughs> anything that gets in there. I might do something a little smoother, but you know, we have to reach for the stars. Mid-tone wood cabinets. For, so for those of you that are like, oh my God, I have to paint my cabinets, not necessarily so. Um, you could do a lot of other things with your cabinet. The mid-tone wood looks beautiful. Uh, you could sand them down a little bit, maybe do a quick little stain on top. Uh, there's a lot of ways to refresh. If you have a solid wood cabinet before you decide to paint them, think about maybe doing a stain. Um, anyone in our PPG paint stores can help you if you want to bring one of your cabinet doors in. Uh, our, our gentlemen in there are, and our ladies are wonderful. They will really be able to help you with all of that. Um, and also notice in this kitchen on the left side, we have a wall of white cabinets and then we have the mid-tone mixed in there. So it gives it a very, um, a, a lovely uh, crafted kind of a feeling. And this return to the soft tone kitchen, I was talking about the cabinet color. Um, white on white is downtrending, but, but people still want that quiet design. So you're seeing a very soft gray and a lot of those cafe latte colors. So it's just softening up a little bit and letting the outside come in. And I just think it's beautiful. 
Now here are some different tones of white on white. We're also seeing the return of the white refrigerator and um, you know these beautiful brass uh, handles on them. Really, really gorgeous. It, it kind of evokes th this ki kitchen in the middle here. Uh, it reminds me of the steel case cabinets that you would have had in your kitchen in the 50s. Um, and it, it's just really fun and hearty. But a lot of white on white when it's coming back, you're seeing a lot of black appliances and you're seeing the copper as well. So color is coming back into the appliances. Stainless as a, a straight appliance is, is kind of going by the wayside. People want more color in there. Excuse me. Um, in the bathroom, dramatic color. And look at this kitchen island here as well. Look at this you know, beautiful, beautiful, rich color here. This makes you want to to want to eat and it makes you want to hang out. So like, I absolutely love this kitchen. I'm just going to click through a couple more of these. Here are some blue kitchens. Um, absolutely loving. Look at the range of blues. This is a blue with a greenish black undertone. This is more of a teal blue. And then this is more of a military blue. So all of these are all on point. And I love this one here in the upper right hand corner. It has that pale blue. Um, last but not least, pantries. Big, big thing. We were talking about pantries early last year with the pandemic and everybody eating at home. Pantry mania is not going away anytime soon. Um, organization, containers, seeing what you have, keeping your food organized. People are canning, people are growing food again. Um, if you are looking to sell your house or buy a house, having a pantry is a huge, huge selling item. So even if you take a closet in your kitchen that used to be like a you know, coat closet coming in off the back, if you take it and flip it to a pantry, smart move, really smart move. I would do it any day of the week. Um, love it. I love this whole slide. And some of the other appliances people are wanting in their kitchen, very important. Uh, this preserves all your wine. There's a wine station, coffee makers, um, sliding in appliance garages, opening doors, things that can hide, like it's just everything. Everything you could possibly want is in your kitchen now and uh, it's all about making it easier, more efficient and not making it uh, go to waste. Now before I go to this next slide, um, this is the end of my kitchen presentation. I do want to talk for one minute. I know I've got like two minutes left and I'm going to talk for one quick minute about what's happening in 2022. Um, we're going to be seeing a lot. We, we're going to be releasing our color of the year in September for 2022. Um, I already know what it is. I'm not going to tell you. Um, and it's not on this slide. I'll tell you that much. But I did want to talk a little bit about if you're going to be working on your houses right now. A couple of trends that we're seeing in those design drivers, old world and antiquity period pieces as a source of inspiration. So this is you know, that whole grand millennial style I was talking about, you know, taking things, reusing them and readapting them, really important. Um, and here's that big round sofa. If you don't have a round piece of furniture, a round sofa, something round in your house, really missing the boat, like all this roundness is coming back. Um, and also a lot of bringing the history to the present day, where we're going to be really seeing a lot of older pieces. You're going to be seeing them being painted and color in the space. And all of these colors, these, these coppers and these gooseberry colors and these greens and color like this, very, very, very big. It's going to be exploding. Um, the gray is, has a lot of brown in it, if it's there at all you're going to be seeing a richness of color. People are wanting to, to break out of it. So I just wanted to give you a peek into next year. Um, that is the end of my presentation. I will be uh, having a coupon sent to all of you, 25% off PPG paints, products, and sundries in our stores. I am available for color consultations in your home. Um, if you would like me to come to your home, it's $75 for an hour and I give you a coupon for $50 towards the paint. It's such a deal. You're gonna be painting anyway, so I'll come to your house and help you pick some paint color and we'll have a lot of fun. Um, and if anybody has any questions, you, you can put them in the box. I'm happy to answer them right now for you. Rosa, uh, while we're waiting on questions, I did have one that I'll go ahead and ask. Um, when it comes to wallpaper for an accent wall, is it better, generally speaking, to go with a large and bold design rather than a small 
daintier print or does it kind of depend on the size of the wall or what are your thoughts? So um, with a large, for, there's what we call large format print, which would be like a flower like this or those small dainty prints. So if you want to bring a, a small dainty print to a wall, that's a very busy pattern. So mm -hmm. I would probably, you, you could use that in a space that you're not going to feel overwhelmed in there. A lot of people are really pulling towards the larger prints right now, um, but I would not put a super large print in a super small space like a powder room. I would try to size that down. Um, one of the interesting things with um, wallpaper, a really great place to use it, if you have a two-story entry in your house, which has a really big, tall wall that goes up two stories on that, you know, where the staircase is, really hard to people are always trying to hang artwork on that wall make it look interesting it's really really hard so that's a great place to just do a wallpaper big large format paper or even like a stripe or something um just a lot of great things so i like the large format um but if you're going to be in a powder room you might want to take it down a little bit smaller okay great thank you and then we did have someone ask um they said they're in ohio do you do virtual uh consultations I do virtual consultations. I've been doing them um, all over the country. So um, I can put my email out there. You can send some photographs to me and then we will have a phone consultation. And we can also do, you know, FaceTime if you like, and I will mail you paint swatches and we can go through your space. So absolutely. Great. And then while we're waiting on some more questions, um, I will ask you another question that I had. Um, so, for someone who's interested in decorating a space but gets easily distracted and overwhelmed in a place like Home Goods, where, where there's a lot of options, a lot of things going on all at once, would you suggest kind of going there with, um, or kind of planning out a mood board in advance, just something to refer back to, um, to stay focused, or, or what, what would you recommend for someone um, who's, you know, just starting this and kind of has an idea that could potentially get sidetracked. That's a really good way to design your space. Um, you should go to Pinterest and, or, you know, yeah, definitely go to Pinterest, go to Instagram, look at some of your favorite designers and start collecting the boards. Um, you will very easily see at that point what you like and what you don't like. And then you can look at what you have in that room and you'll just keep hitting the same thing. And then you can look at what you have in that room and take out of the room what isn't fitting that design style. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna do something mid-century modern and you have a lot of like old carved furniture and you really want a classic mid-mod feel, take those pieces out and see what you have left and then start deciding what you wanna put in that room. Now, that being said, it's not easy to go and purchase all new furniture. I cannot do it, I don't. I have a lot of old pieces and a lot of new pieces, but I try to um, put pieces in that I bring little by little. Um, one of the things a lot of people do is they think that, you know, and it's just this instant society we live in where you want to have your room done immediately. Um, it, it's not immediate. It takes time to curate that space. So uh, yeah, I, a mood board is a great idea. If you know you're going to need a sofa, um, I love the curved sofa, but make sure when you're going to invest in a large piece like that, that it's comfortable and it's going to serve you for years to come. I like to stick to my trendier pieces to be smaller pieces like chairs that I would get at a secondhand shop, maybe some artwork I'd get at a secondhand shop. Um, just really want to kind of, if you're going to make a big investment, make sure that it's something that's going to, you're going to be able to live with for a long, long time. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And then we had one more question. Can you go back to the blue kitchen slide? Absolutely. And then she said, are all these shades on trend? Every single one of these shades is on trend. Yes. So this one in the middle this is very close to a PPG color I have called Admiralty. I'm going to give you the color number. It is PPG. I'm pulling it up right now. One zero. It's actually, there's two colors that are close to this. These are my mil, that's called a military blue. 
So I would, Admiralty is 1042-7. And another color that's very close to that is Cavalry, like the Cavalry is coming. And that's, I'm sorry, Cavalry is 1041-7. Admiralty, Admiralty is 1042-7. Dash seven. So that's what you have there in the middle. Absolutely on trend. Um, the color on the left is, is a color that is very close to, um, it's called Oceana. I'm getting that number for you as well. I'm sorry, I'm not finding it. It's right here. Palette's super huge. <laughs> Oceana is 10-01. Here's the PPG color right there. And right under Oceana is a color called Sorcerer Spell, another great greenish blue, and that's 10-02. This teal color in the lower right-hand corner, also very much on trend. I have several versions of that. And I'm more than happy to help you with pick a blue for your kitchen. And then what you see in the upper right-hand corner is like this almost robin's egg blue. Um, and this looks really nice with this. Remember that orange we saw on the color palette was that dynamo orange, and that's actually this stove. Now, here's the key to pulling a blue into your kitchen. The key is to see what's going on with your floor color. Um, and, and I can certainly be happy, I'm happy to help you with this. You can notice in all these kitchens, the floors are very different. So this kitchen here with this, the greenish blue here in the lower right hand corner, look at the floor has that honey color. So it, that's really a key driver. In the other kitchen with the military blue here, we have like black and white on the floor. I don't know what's going on in this left-hand floor, but I suspect it's gonna be a lot like this tile where there's the gray. And in this Robin's egg blue kitchen, we have a lot of that pale crisp, it's probably a very light gray floor. So there are lots of ways. That doesn't mean that if you don't have this kind of a floor, you can't have this military blue. You certainly can. Um, we just have to find the right tone of it but we can certainly make it work. I do a lot of blue kitchens and um, I think they're fabulous. I love them, they're happy. And uh, I don't think they're going to go out of style anytime soon. People love them, love them, love them. And your cabinets can be painted. I just did a kitchen in Bridgeville. Um, all the cabinets were oak and we painted them. Um, we did all the bottom cabinets in this military blue color. And then we did the upper cabinets in white and uh, we pulled some accent colors uh, throughout some of her decor. I had her buy actually an area rug like this blue one here in the lower right hand corner. Her kitchen looks so fabulous. We had so much fun with it. So salvaged her kitchen. She was gonna rip it all out, pay to paint her a couple thousand dollars to paint them. Um, and they will last for years and years and years. So I told her, save your money, paint your cabinets and go take a vacation when the pandemic's <laughs> over. <laughs> And we have um, one last question, it looks like. She said, I would love to be able to refer to these color palettes later. Is there a way that I can access them? Um, I can send some links uh, to you and um, they, we have them all online at ppgpaints.com. So if you go to ppgpaints.com, you will see our 2021 color palettes and all of these color stories are there. Be well, be true, and be wild. And when you click on them, you actually see the, the colors. And then you can click on the color and go to our um, color visualizer. And that's really fun because if you're, especially if you're painting an exterior of a house, there are rooms on there that are already pulled off. You can pull the colors on. Um, and like I said, if you're interested in, you know, doing something with me virtually, I can show you how to do this. Just reach out to me, uh, my information will be provided to you all. And I can show you how to do some of this in a quick little 15 minute phone call. It's really fun, the colors are there, you can pull them on, you can paint rooms and, and paint your front door and kind of get an idea and then order the large swatches. And that's really fun. They're really- Awesome. Big. That, yeah, that sounds great. And we'll also include those links on the GB Life member community and yes. perhaps send an email out to um, everyone who registered for tonight as well with those links. Okay. Um, and then we had 
um, someone asking if you could re repeat the URL again. Oh, www.ppgpaints, plural, dot com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and sharing your wealth of knowledge on color trends. I know I learned a lot. Um, hopefully this will be the first of many color trend webinars. Well, I hope you guys had fun. I know I could talk about color forever, but it was a real blast and um, we'll get all that information out to you. So have a great night and a great week. Awesome. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.